everybody, back out bully in here. Now it's human nature to emphasize the good and downplay the bad. That's just the way the world works. Everybody does it to a certain extent. I've done it here on my channel, talking about some of the really great coins that we've had that have performed incredibly well. But we've also got quite a few coins in our collection that are a little bit floppy. They haven't done very well and they are unlikely to do very well into the future. And some, like on this table, are worth fractions of what were paid for them. So today's Ponderous Wednesday topic is going to be all about dealing with those loss leading coins. Perhaps you've cashed out and you've made a loss and it's how you mentally deal with that and process that and learn from your, your mistakes. I think it's a really important topic and one that you don't hear an awful lot of. You hear an awful lot of people talking about the great and good coins that they purchase. I've done that before as well. Uh, you know, like the uh, the God series where you can buy a coin for £400 and sell it for £1,000 next month. The Queen's Beast series, you know, the premiums that go up on these coins are ridiculous. But you don't see very many people talking about the tale of Peter Rabbit 50p coin that is about half the value that it was issued by the Royal Mint. It's a flop. Uh, you know, it's part of life and people don't always talk about it. So I thought I'd talk about some of the coins that I've got here, which I perceive to be a little bit of stuck assets, a little bit of stuck money that's not really going to get out what I paid for it and how I'm going to cope with that, how I'm dealing with that, what I've done uh, mentally to cope with that as well because I think that's a really important aspect and what we can learn from this whole situation. I think that's probably the most important part of this entire topic. My usual disclaimer to go in here though, I'm not giving financial advice or anything like that. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things here on YouTube. So. Any financial decisions that you make having watched this video are yours and yours alone. And if you own any of these coins that I'm calling flops and you disagree, please share your thoughts and opinions on them down in the comment section. And I would also love to know about your biggest flop that you've ever purchased. That's a fascinating topic and it's really encouraging to see if anybody out there will share you know, the biggest failure that they've made in the coin collecting world. I think that would be quite interesting to get that fun discussion flowing down in the comment section. So I'll see you down there. So where to start? Well, let's start with some of the older coins that I've purchased here. So um, I think one of the things that was, you know, it's very interesting for silver uh, because it's very addictive and I got hooked quite quickly. I was already a collector. I've already got that kind of collector bug and gene in my, you know, deep down in my genome. And I really do like collecting things and having different types of coins out there. And when I got started uh, with buying silver back in, gosh, it was 2016, uh, I wanted to have a little bit of an eclectic mix of coins. So we got a bunch of bullion, basic bullion coins. And then I wanted to pick up some, um, you know, some basically some proof coins or some extra fun coins that were slightly different, like this High Relief 2012 Silver Koala from the Perth Mint. And I purchased this on eBay, I seem to remember. I've got it written down exactly what I paid for it, but I remember I paid, you know, bear in mind this is a, gosh, I can't even remember, is it two ounces of silver? must be written on here somewhere. No, it's only a one ounce silver coin. And I think I paid something like 50 pounds for it. Um, and that's an awful lot of money. At the time I thought, actually, you know, that's a pretty good price. And it was on eBay. Um, so I purchased it. I did a best offer, I think. It was listed for like 58 pounds or something. And I got it for 50. And I thought that's a great deal. If I'm willing to buy it and pay for it, somebody else might as well. Mm, not so much. If you look at this coin now, I mean, I haven't really kept up too much in it. Uh, I think there are some listed on eBay around that price, but ultimately they're not going to, you're not going to get that kind of price for them unless you get very lucky indeed. See some of the particulars here on the other side. We've got quite a high COA number there. I can't remember what the mintage was on these, 10,000. There you go, 10,000 worldwide. So for a, you know, for a high relief coin, it's, it's, that was a, an interesting one. So that's probably um, one of the worst purchases I've done. I mean, ultimately I really like it. It's a fun coin. I've enjoyed it whilst I've had it. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make up for the loss leading that it's holding for me at the moment. The next one, um, so that, what I learned from that, let's go on to each coin, what I learned from that. So what I learned from buying that one is first of all, do a lot more research than just looking at eBay. Um, you know, you probably could have worked out that this coin was not going to, not really going to perform very well. One of the real big tricks and tips I've got now is to always, always, always look at the sold listings side of things. Look for auctions of these coins, see what the auctions are going for, because an auction is a much more realistic idea of what price these items will be going for. So that's definitely something to, uh, to factor in. So the next purchase that I have, which I 
I don't like to live with regrets, but I do regret this purchase because it was a little bit of a, uh, well, it was definitely a, a mistake for me to buy this. Now, this was back in 2016, again, when I was, I think it was early 2017. Uh, this is the silver proof uh, last round pound. So we have uh, a pound coin that's round here and it's the last ever round pound before the 12-sided uh, pound came into circulation. Now, this was actually purchased for a, uh, a community member. So at the time, I'm not going to name names or anything like that. Um, he was in America and he wanted to purchase a silver proof round pound and he wanted um, me to purchase it. He found one on eBay that he wanted and asked me to buy it. And he'd purchased some of my hand pulled silver before as well. Uh, so I knew he was a you know fairly reliable chap and was quite happy to sort of you know buy it for him and send it across once he paid me. But he never paid it, paid me for it. Never at all, just stopped answering emails. I don't know if something happened to him, I never heard from him again, and I've never heard from him since. So, um, yeah, basically, I learned a lesson there. If you're going to do somebody a favour, um, make sure you get payment up front for it. So that was a little bit of a shame. So I am now lumped with this uh, silver-proof round pound, and um, my lesson... Oh, you see, I don't really care about this coin. It's, it's one of those ones where I'm like... It's it's probably worth about 10, 20 quid at best, and I paid 75 for it, which is really, really very sad indeed. And it was actually quite disheartening at the time when I purchased it. And uh, I didn't want to like name and shame and call people out on YouTube or anything like that when I was just getting going with my channel and everything. That's not the kind of person that I am. And I never will name and shame this person because I don't know what happened. Perhaps they've, you know, perhaps they've fallen off the face of the planet for a reason. Um, but I am lumped with, you know, at least a 50 or 60 pound loss for that one for my naivety of trying to help that person. But, you know, that's part of life. And it did hit me a little bit. Uh, it made me just a little bit more cautious about helping people that you don't really know, strangers on YouTube. Um, and I think that was a really important life lesson for me that, um, you know, there are people out there that will try perhaps to take advantage of you and your channel and everything that you do. So that was a very interesting one. Now, next we have Peter Rabbit, and this is a really interesting, really interesting one, actually. The first Peter Rabbit that came out, the first silver-proof Peter Rabbit, the 2000 and, was it 2016, I think it was? What's this one? 2017, yes, must have been the 16. Hit the world by storm, it really did, and, you know, th those ones were, are even still selling for hundreds and hundreds of pounds, four or five hundred pounds. Uh, for a 50p that's worth maybe three pounds in its silver content. You know, it's it's ridiculous how good those performed. And when the Royal Mint announced the second iteration of the Peter Rabbit coin, there was a huge, huge hype about it. It busted the Royal Mint website. It crashed it. People were queuing for ages and ages to get onto their website just to place an order for the coin. And I did the same. And uh, I was expecting that this could be a very good coin to hold on to and to earn a lot of money on. I bought five, I think, uh, and I got my parents to buy an extra two, so I had seven in total looking to cash out on them and, uh, and earn a good bit of money. Very quickly though, and you did in fact see quite a lot of flipping in that early stages of the, uh, the Peter Rabbit's 2017 existence on eBay, but very quickly uh, prices started to settle down, prices started to go down even further, even further. You see the auction listings ending for around the Royal Mint price. And that was when I thought, oh gosh, right, what if they go even lower? I've got, you know, seven of these that I've put money in, and if they lose 20 quid each, that's 140 quid down the drain. So I put them up on eBay and I sold them for basically, I think I got just about what I paid for them back at the end. So the lesson learned from this one, though, was hype, hype, hype is not always as it seems. And it's really important to remember that. You'll see a lot of videos here on YouTube. Um, myself, I've done, you know, I've pumped coins in a certain way saying that they're really good. I don't pump coins to say that people should go and buy them. I don't think that's the right term, but I am very positive about a number of coins like the Queen's Beast series. I think it's really important for you guys to make your own minds up about these coins. I made mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past. I'm not infallible at all. And it's really important to remember that. And a mistake I've made uh, recently, I say recently, it was last year, is probably on this quarter ounce proof Britannia. And this is the quarter ounce gold proof Britannia. It's a gorgeous coin. I absolutely love it. And that's one of the things that's important to remember here. If you really do enjoy what you've bought, I think ultimately it doesn't make too much of a difference to me anyway in my situation about whether or not this is a little bit of a lost leader. Uh, I wasn't planning on selling it anytime soon. 
So to have it and enjoy it and see it and share it with you guys here on YouTube and maybe hold it for uh, you know, 10, 20 years to see what happens with it, that's fine for me. But I know there are people out there who perhaps thought this one, like myself, would be a potential uh, good one to pick up and have as a kind of medium short term profit earner. It didn't pan out that way at all. So, uh, yeah, there's interesting lessons to be learned there about that. Um, I was considering collecting a quarter ounce, you know, Britannia series in proof from the Raw Mint. But I think having seen how this one's gone, um, yeah, it's probably not for me going forwards into the future. So that's definitely a lesson learned on that one. You know, not, not every coin is for everybody. And depending on why you're wanting to buy something, and that's, I think, the most important thing. Talking of why you might want to buy something, let's have a look at these Legends of Asgard series rounds or coins. I don't think they're coins. Are they coins? Yes, no, they are coins that are here. So these are amongst some of my all-time favourites in terms of designs, and I'm very happy that I've got them. But there are some issues with the Choice Mint, who are now, I think, pretty much bust or gone completely. There was a whole saga about them with a, a Libertad set that um, they were collecting a lot of money from customers and nothing ever went out to customers. So they're gone and there is not going to be any more of these absolutely stunning high relief coins, which is a real shame. And, uh, you know, that now I think that whole side of things has slightly, um, what's the word, you know, it's, it's made the choice mint have a bit of a bad reputation. So their coins similarly might suffer going forward into the future, which is interesting. When you look at these as, t uh, you know, in terms of like their performance over short periods of time, uh, first off, you can still actually buy the Ymir coin, which is the latest release in most uh, big kind of coin dispensaries like PowerCoin or the Coin Shop and various others. Uh, so they're not necessarily rare as hen's teeth. Uh, I think there's like 1500 as a mintage of each of them. And uh, ultimately, they're not necessarily the best performers out there in terms of yield and return, but they are very pretty. And I think that's an important thing to uh, remember. So how do you deal with all of these issues going forward? That's, I guess, a really important question for us to finish on here today. Well, I would say one of the most important factors for me is to always examine and learn from what you've done in the past. That is the absolute most important part of everything that I've done on this journey of collecting coins. You know, these Ymir coins, the Valkyrie, the Odin, the Ymir coins, they were, they were purchases because at the time when I was, you know, coming up into the world of silver, uh, these were out at that time and there was a lot of people talking about them saying how good they were and I really liked them and again it was at that time when I was looking to get a bit of a diversified uh, portfolio of different types of coins and things and I really, really liked them. So buying what you like and liking what you buy is a great mantra to live by, but it's not necessarily the safest mantra to live by in terms of finances. And, you know, I would say it's a good justification, but it's a dangerous justification as well. You really do need to make sure that you're buying for the right reasons for yourself. Uh, and if you have that disposable income that you're not too worried about the, you know, the actual financial side of things for these coins, then I guess that's a good rationale to work by. Uh, but it's definitely one which I'm revisiting time and time again as I look on different coins that I've purchased and for the reasons why I've purchased them. You know, these particular ones here, when I purchased them, I did originally think about selling them at the end of the series so that I would have a profit that comes out of it. But now that I see them and now that I notice that there's pretty much not going to be a profit from them at all, um, I kind of just like them and I kind of want to just keep them as part of my learning history and my journey in this whole world of silver. Uh, and that's really important as well. So I think looking back, uh, you know, is really important. If you have not reflected on your mistakes in life generally, I think you really should. It's very actually quite cathartic to do uh, and to share them with somebody as well. Keeping things bottled up is not good. And, uh, you know, sharing your mistakes, sharing your uh, you know, your failures, you know, this one here, I didn't want to tell Mrs. Backyard Bullion about this at the time. It took me a couple of weeks before. Uh, I really had had no contact whatsoever with this chap. And uh, this was sat basically on my desk at the time and Mrs. Backyard Bullion asked me, what's what's this coin all about? And I said, well, I've got to tell you something. It's uh, it's not good news on that front. I've, uh, I've made a mistake. And it was really very good. You know, it's nice to uh, put things in perspective as well, I think. And ultimately, what you see here on the table, it's not the extent of all of the maybe sort of really bad purchases that I've made. I've made a few others as well. Um, but, you know, ultimately, 
it's not a great deal of money lost here. Um, and again, you don't actually technically lose the money until you've actually cashed out from having these coins. So that's something to factor in as well. Perhaps one day these will be very valuable. Who knows? It's unlikely, but you just never know. That is also a particularly dangerous way to think. So, it, you know, there's so many different aspects to this, which is very important for people to, to understand. Holding on to something because you think that one day it might perform better is a dangerous road. It's not necessarily going to happen. In fact, it might get even worse. You might be in an even worse position from where you are right now. So always, always, always think about that. Reflect on your mistakes, learn from them, see what you can do better next time. That is what I live my life by at the moment. You know, it's really important to do that. And I think it's also important to share them. So please do feel free to share your thoughts and opinions on some of my mistakes that I've made here uh, on the table. Also, I'd love to know what your biggest mistake was. If you are willing to share it, please do feel free down in the comment section to talk about your biggest flop that you've purchased and what it means to you, what you've learned from it or what you're gonna do with it. That would be very interesting to see. If you enjoyed today's video and content, then please make sure you hit the like button. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and you'd like to see future videos like this, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed and want to get notifications when videos go live, then make sure you hit the alarm bell. Otherwise, that is all I have to say. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you all for watching. And please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.